So in this video, I'm going to mess around with some techniques to try and improve on some techniques that I already know. And I'm going to try and experiment with a couple of ideas that I've had that I thought about in the last diorama that I built. Practice on little dioramas is a lot of fun and it means you're not wasting a load of materials doing it for the first time on a gaming table. Now before we go into this video, let me tell you a bit more about this video sponsor, which is Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning platform. I've used it myself and I know a lot of other people that have used it. Do you want to explore your creative and career options? Learn what it takes to break into a creative industry? Take classes? Find your creative voice and style? Or you wanted more financial stability? Launch merchandise on a new platform for passive income like Etsy or Shopify and grow your audience with video marketing. Or even if it's in your own line of work, there's something to learn. I use Marcus Brownlee's YouTube success and I learned quite a lot as well, which I didn't expect. I've used it and if you don't want to take my word for it, the first thousand people to use my link below in the description will get one month absolutely free and i'm telling you guys the sort of stuff that you can learn on this will make you better at whatever you're trying to get into so thanks to sealshare for sponsoring this video now as always i'm going to use a cheap photo frame as a base and i'm going to use some really cheap polystyrene now i'm leaving the glass down this time because i don't really need much foam for this the only real reason that i'm using the foam is so it's something that's a little better to stick to than the glass also, we can put some slight undulation into this foam to save on product. Now to get the undulation, I'm just using a heat gun. I'd not bothered if I burned through it in areas, because them areas I can stick some rocks and things on. It will deform and it will go all warpy, but we'll stick that down. I am going to stick this down with the fast dry basing glue, but I want to show you a little technique for sticking foam down to large areas with air drying glues. Air drying glues need air to dry, so make sure that you put in little dots of glue. You don't put a lot down, otherwise it'll probably never dry. Maybe it's okay on this sort of really thin foam because the air can pass through it, but if you were gluing 10, 20, 30 mil foam down to a baseboard, I wouldn't advise doing it, but if it's the only glue you've got, literally putting a few little dots down and applying pressure will keep it nice and thin and it will dry pretty quickly. Now on the areas where I burnt through, I have removed a little bit of extra foam to make space for the back. Um, I'm doing this so I can super glue them down in areas. But what I'm going to do with the back this time is I'm going to try and layer it up a bit more like a dry stone wall, for example. One so I don't actually have to do any filling. I don't actually have to do any sculpting. I can find the pieces that just work together without much work, which saves time and saves on product. It does take a little bit of finicking about and finding the bits that work, but you can do this. And obviously if there is any areas that you're not totally happy about, we can hide that with ground covers. The only negative to this is not using compound to sculpt around it, it will be weaker. But in the case of diorama building, there's nothing really wrong with this. Just make sure you use plenty of super glue so it doesn't come unstuck. And any little gaps, just stick another small piece of bark in there. So it hides it and it adds a little bit of structure. But I would really not advise doing this on wargaming terrain. Now, for gluing the ground covers down, I'm just using the fast dry basing glue. But I'm putting thick amounts of glue around the base of the rocks so the base material can then go up against the rocks and hide the edges. Now, from the video where I showed you how to get the most out of your ground covers, this I'm going to do the same way. I'm literally chucking this grout and soil mix all over. I'm applying more to the raised areas and less to the lower areas, but putting enough around the base of the rocks so it looks like they've been bedded in there a while. But I throw this on quite heavily and the reason that I'm doing it this way is I want to try and sculpt the dry product before I seal it. So you're sort of working in reverse. You're sort of dusting it off your stones and letting it land and fall. Um, you're trying to create the landforms by using the brush. And this 
is something that I've not done before, but I was trying to do it to see if it gave a better effect. And once I'd actually brushed it away and started getting it in the areas that I liked, I really liked this technique. It's a bit long-winded, I'm not going to lie, but the effect is very nice. It's almost quite therapeutic. It's like being an archaeologist, but you're not really going to find anything because you know what you've put there. But once you've got that in the position that you want and you're happy with the final look, seal all that in place with matte scenic sealant and leave that to dry totally. And once it's completely dry, I've sprayed it black because I want to take from the last diorama where I was using natural materials with painted materials. So I thought I'd paint the rocks, I thought I'd paint the ground cover, and then we can apply natural products on top. And we get that nice different textures, consistencies, colours, which all add to make things look a lot more natural. For the rocks and ground cover, I'm literally just dry brushing with a muted palette. And I'm going on with like some burnt umber, I'm using like some really pale warm greys, and I'm just sort of bringing that up to the point where I'm, I'm happy with it. What I find when you're doing a diorama like this, it's normally better to go a little bit brighter because the ground covers are gonna dull it down quite a lot and you don't want everything to be really dull and dank. So taking this up just a little bit, it's surprising how nice it looks. And using the colors that you use on the rocks, which are found in your base cover, it'll all tie together in the end. Now once that's had a little time to dry, I then come in with Arid Earth Base ready. And the reason I'm using this is the colours that I used on the ground and on the rocks are in this ground material. So it'll all tie together. Now the ground material does look a little bit brighter than what we've painted. But once we seal that down, it will darken down to roughly the same colour. Now with this being a hunting diorama-esque thing, I wanted to mess with some static grasses because I want the goblins to be sneaking through the long grass and it's something that you can't really achieve using foams. So I wanted to mess with a layering technique that I've been thinking about for a while. Now, as always, we're gonna put down some two mil static with the applicator first. This shows the greener, more water rich grass because it's younger. Then what we do is we vacuum the excess off and then I'm sort of dry brushing the tops of the grass. But for this layer, I'm going quite heavy with the glue, but I'm only going in the middle of the patches because I want to get the height in the middle of the grass patches. Now, once we've got that down, I'm gonna use a dead longer grass, four mil, um, just concentrating the middle areas. Now I've not put much grass in the hopper because I don't want it to be dense and really thick. I want it to be quite shallow. And then what I'm doing is I'm repeating this process, but this time I'm hardly using any glue. Now this technique is slightly complicated if you're not leaving each layer to dry, but you can still do it. You've just got to keep applying small amounts, just literally the tops of the static grass in tiny areas. Don't worry if you get a big glob like I have done there, but just touching it so you can just see the glue on the very tips of the grass is all it takes. And once you've got that down, reapply the static again, but try and not to be too heavy handed and drop a load in the area. And what I'm wanting is to create, as the grass is getting longer, it's getting sparser. So we can actually see through the static grass. And at this point, it's gonna be pretty long. So it should give you that sort of really nice long strawberry grasses as it gets longer and older. And the best thing about using a vacuum to vacuum up all the excess static grass is you can also pull the grass around and sort of get like a natural wind swept, swept look to it. So it's not perfect like a carpet and completely sticking upright. You can pull it around and get a lot more natural messy look to it. Now for vegetation, I'm using literally the tops of the sprigs of sea foam. And I'm just putting small amount of glue on there and I'm going to apply some different colored flocks from purple, really browny yellows, greens. And I'm going to make quite a lot of these and some I'm not even going to put any foliage in at all. And I'm just going to place these around because as I keep saying in terrain, colors, textures, sizes, the more the better. And I think these are going to add a nice little speck of color 
and some texture difference to the entire piece. And I just make as many as I think I need. Now the benefit to working with static grass and then flowers and things like this is the grass helps them stand up. So again, probably not great for wargaming as such, but it's definitely great for dioramas and basing techniques. But a glob of glue at the base of them, once that's dry, it's going to be as good as hot glue. It's just obviously not as unsightly, which is nice. Now for placement, this is where it's really hard to explain. I just go with the first place that I think to put it. I don't overly think it. I just chuck them around where I think it should be there. If it doesn't look right, I leave it because it, I think it makes it look more natural because in nature things are just weird as in just stick them anywhere and it's surprising how natural it'll look when, it, when you start getting it all on there when to stop that's up to you but adding a couple of pieces with no foliage on add some nice contrast now adding tufts even though we've got a lot of static on there they're a lot denser so they add another texture and another color because the grass is more together static grass is transparent and it just adds a better look now for subjects, I'm using these models from Print Eye Minis, and the idea was to have a bit of a hunt. So I 3D printed an arrow, and I'm just gonna put some blood effects where the arrows hit, and this will just bring the, the entire diorama to life. It's surprising what a few badly painted models can do to a diorama. So I just find a position that I think they look the best in, and we stick them down. Now for sticking models like this down, especially in the static grass, literally put some super glue on the feet and press them down hard as you want them to squash the grass down. Just make sure that your ground covers are dry at this point because otherwise the ground covers will lift away with the feet. So just stick them in place and press them down hard so it disturbs the stuff underneath them so it looks a lot more natural. And once we've got them models stuck down, we're done. Now building little dioramas like this are a good way of practicing and it's a good little thing to store, put on a shelf to look at and you can always look back at it and see what you've learned and how far you've come. I'm starting to do a lot of these little dioramas now because I just want to get better at scenics and building a little hunting diorama like this, yes the models are not great but it wasn't about that, it's just about playing with a few new ideas even though the ideas don't seem like big ideas it's surprising what a load of little ideas come together to make some subtle little changes to your dioramas or terrain building and once you're really happy with an actual technique you can apply this to entire gaming tables or just a little bit or even if you just don't like the effect at all you've learned something in that process so if you've not built any dioramas because you're a war gamer or anything like that, give it a go. They don't take that long, you don't use much product, and it's a good way to practice and hone your skills. And that's why I'm doing it, because it's a way to teach you the little things that I'm learning. And at the same time, I can get better quicker because I'm not doing massive projects. I'm doing smaller, little techniques in one go. What do you think? Anyway guys, if you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to comment below. And if you want to buy any of the scenics used in this video, check the links. So thanks for watching, thanks for tuning in, and I'll catch you again for the next video. Love, love, love.